Hi everybody, it's Lorraine Murray here from Connected Kids, um, who also runs the Teach Children Meditation campaign. You'll see it on the website um, just coming up here. And uh, I'm delighted you can join me for another vid short video blog with some tips and ideas on teaching children of all ages, including teenagers, meditation. So um, this week I wanted to kind of share with you a few ideas that I got from my experience of teaching my course in Boston in the USA. And I was very fortunate to meet um, Beth from the Roots to Wings uh, yoga studio in Newtonbury Port and also Candy, her collaborator, who helped organise it. And we had a wonderful group of people, as usual. We always have really nice people on our course. I'm very blessed to be able to work with such nice people with great intentions. Um, but they came up with some really nice ideas uh, for helping your children to feel a little bit more calm and centred within themselves. And one of the, um, the things that's coming up in the course at the moment is the use of sound and how important sound is when we're actually teaching meditation. And you might not think that sound is that important, but um, you know the, the sound of your voice and the sound that you make, even if you wanted to do a sound meditation, um, can be really, really important. And I've realised that one of the reasons I encourage adults not to use a script, but to work um, from an intuitive script when either teaching a meditation or a mindful activity, is because it feels different. It totally feels different. It feels much more authentic. Um, it connects more to the children and to the young people that you're teaching. And it develops a sense of trust within yourself. And that can only be a good thing, not just for teaching meditation, but for all aspects of life. So, um, so the sound stuff is um, really cool. And if you're interested in how sound works, then look up a guy called Jonathan Goldman. Um, I've written a lot about him in my second book because, and he's given me some wonderful stuff to include because I went on a workshop with him and um, some very simple techniques can have such a calming effect. And um, one of the, the things that we find sometimes with children is that we think they're too noisy, yeah? And we think meditation should be silent as well. And of course some forms of meditation should be silent, but you can really set yourself up with false expectations if you think children are just going to sit there completely silently all the time. We kind of have to guide them how to be silent, how to appreciate silence, um, and how to make, I suppose, a sound with more awareness. I don't want to say control, uh, I mean awareness, so we can realise the effect of the sound on our body and we can realise the effect that different sounds have on us. So, um, obviously people do meditation with chants, uh, with Sanskrit chants, and um, you might be very comfortable with that, and if you are, that's wonderful. Not everybody is, though, and sometimes when you're teaching meditation, it's inappropriate, perhaps, not to use something that could be seen as religious. It's not, but it could be perceived as such. But we can use much more neutral ways of bringing in sound. And um, Susan Kaiser Greenland did a really nice little um, video clip of her teaching children to become aware of their breath and sound. And she got them to choose maybe their favourite food um, or the favourite fruit. And I think I saw her leading a, a mindfulness where you just repeated the word banana all the time as you breathe out. So it's banana, 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 you know. And you might not think that's meditation, but... What it's doing is it's making a sound, it's actually being in with the body and being in with the breath. And for younger children, we really have to be more creative and fun to engage their interest. But one of the nice um, kind of techniques I like is working with the sound ah, which comes from the heart centre, actually. So in our courses, we go through all the different sounds we can make with different points of the body or different energy centres. But even if you're not that knowledgeable about them, even if you're finding it, um, you know, quite a new uh, area for you to explore, all we need to really do is sit with the sound ah and make that sound. And it, it works on so many different levels, helping us a little bit more into balance. So everybody can hopefully make the sound ah, and um, if we're making that sound, it's important to encourage children to vary the tone and vary the volume as well of that sound that they make. 
So sometimes they'll make a really loud sound and sometimes they'll make a much quieter sound. And then to take some time in between making the sound for them to just listen to their body and the silence that they have. And then notice again what it's like when the sound comes out. And sometimes encouraging them not to um, force the sound but maybe see what it's like to force the sound and then when not to force the sound, almost like the ear is just breathing through you. So if you were um, meditating with your kids, you know, you'd encourage them to come into their breath, breathing in, and so on. And it isn't about making a perfect sound. You know, sometimes they'll hear their voice crackle. Sometimes they'll hear, you know, uh, they'll not be able to do such a long breath, you included. Sometimes it'll be a very long breath. Sometimes if they practice it a little bit, it gets longer for some reason. So it's just about giving them something that's, that's really important for them to focus on. Sometimes we can place our hand on the chest or sometimes on the throat as we make the sound. And um, that's kind of cool because then you feel the vibration of the sound because you're not just working with the chest and the heart, you're working with the throat. And I always think when we make sounds, it's like an internal massage. It's a very, very soothing and powerful way to meditate. And that was what came up when we were um, practicing in the, uh, the Boston group, which I thought was kind of cool. We also looked at combining um, sound with movement um, so you could move... Um, your hands out, uh, bring the hands in as you finish that sound. Also, um, kind of slightly in the same vein, we had a really nice, um, uh, it was Kim that showed me this, which she called the Yes Dance. And she basically, you're standing, if I stand you won't see me, but if you're standing, put your hands up like this to the sky, imagine the sun in the sky. And then just saying yes. You could make that a sound. Yes. Or whichever language you speak using that word to make the sound. And, um, and just saying yes to life. Just saying yes to whatever experiences that come up. And just being in a much more positive kind of frame of mind. With feet firmly planted on the floor. Just imagining all that lovely sunshine or light. Whatever you want to imagine coming right down through the body. And then another one that came up which was really nice was using mudras. Mudras are hand positions that connect different parts of the body together just through the fingers. And the one that we uh, practice in class, um, if you're finding it difficult to get children to concentrate and yourself concentrate, this is a very good mudra, the tips of the fingers. I talk about it in my book Calm Kids and it's very good for grounding. And um, your fingers are connected just being aware of the breath. And then you can change to the next one, and so on. Okay, you can listen to the sound of the breath, and then on one of those ones you can make a sound. You can the I think the the mantra that they gave me was Satanama, so Sa, Ta, Na, Ma, and then you can go backwards as well Sa, Ta, Na, Ma, and um, obviously doing it in a much more slow sense and just kind of giving them something to concentrate on it. And that might only take 30 seconds, but if you do that every day with your kids, then I can assure you, you'll, you'll start to see a difference in them. Their energy, their feelings, their, their minds will settle. Um, yeah, so kind of cool. And the other um, point that came up on the Boston um, course, which was I thought was a great way of describing what we sometimes do, is uh, Kim again came up with this phrase called a crisis meditation and what that means is that you've not been meditating, your children have not been meditating and all of a sudden you sit down and go right we've got to sort things out, we've got to get ourselves in a calmer place. Well if you're experienced that's really possible, you know if you've been doing meditation for quite a long while yes it is possible to sit down and sort things out through what, you know it's called a crisis meditation but really, it's much better to just practice gently when life is good, you know, because the more that you do that, the more resilience that will be and inner strength that will come up so that when a crisis does occur and you try and take yourself into meditation, it won't be such a struggle. In fact, you'll find that your meditation becomes like a best friend that really 
like a best friend putting an arm around you and just helping you to feel strong and safe and protected and, and comfortable in this moment of crisis that you're experiencing and that your children might be experiencing. So I thought that was a really cool expression and um, just something for us to think about. Let's try and avoid the crisis meditation as much as we can by building up our uh, mental, emotional, physical and spiritual resilience, practicing a little bit of meditation every day. So I hope you found that useful and um, remember if you want to know more about what we do, have a look at our website, teachchildrenmeditation.com. I have a bootcamp kids which is out which gives you all the basics that you might need to use for yourself helping you teach your kids meditation. It covers all ages and includes some tips on working with autism and ADHD. I've got a second book coming out, Connected Kids, which fingers crossed will be this month. It will come out as an ebook initially and eventually it will come out as a printed version. You've got to sign up to our mailing list to make sure you're kept informed of that. And uh, I teach courses. Um, I teach courses actually worldwide now. Um, I do a lot in Scotland, where I'm from. Um, I go to London and sometimes Glastonbury, Dublin. I've been in America, Australia, New Zealand. I'm going to Copenhagen today. So, you know, if you're interested in hosting or find, helping me uh, find someone to host it in your country, then drop me an email, info at teachchildrenmeditation.com. And I'll come back to you with the terms of what I do so that maybe you can, um, we can arrange something together. Because for me, the more people I have out there teaching children meditation, the more life skills we're giving children, which will potentially help them when they are in a state of crisis and something has happened to them. And the more peace that we bring into this pretty hectic world. So from my heart to yours, thank you for listening. And I'll hopefully hear from you or see you next time. Thanks, bye now.